Hello Half-Life Nation, here we are with Zane Schweitzer, five-time master of the ocean, two-time Red Bull <laughs> ultimate waterman. Zane knows different water sports. What we want to talk about today is foiling in the different disciplines. What is it that you do kind of differently in each of the different disciplines and how do they feed into each other? And so, you know, if we look at the different disciplines, we have prone foil surf, we have sup foil surf, we have kite foil surf, fin surf foil, wing foil, <laughs> wherever you want to start, whatever your passion is, is a great place to start. And why don't we just kind of kick into it? You know, I know for John and I, we spent a lot of time on, you know, wake foiling behind the boat. And what it helped us with is once we began prone foiling, we knew what to do when we got up, you know, on foil. You've taught a lot of people and also you've had to learn all these sports. Like, is there one sport you think is easier than another, a better place to start? Or As far as foiling. As, as far as foiling. Yeah. And how do you see those things kind of working together to, to help you do other sports? Well, my, my initial experience with foiling was with windsurf foiling. I've been windsurf foiling for quite some time and I always thought that windsurf foiling was the easiest transition to get into hydrofoiling. But then again, windsurfing is kind of one of those sports where it's, it's one of the harder sports to learn if you don't already know it, right? Yeah. And then wing, wing uh, foiling and wing boarding came along. And it's really interesting because wing boarding is quite an easy sport to learn as far as uh, wind sports go. But I'd say it's also probably one of the easiest introductions to foil sports. But if you wanna have the full training wheels, then you do it behind the boat or behind a jet ski. If you have, of course, the opportunity and the captain to do so. Um, but it definitely helps for sure because you minimize the amount of elements that are you have to worry about. You know, you're simply focusing on your body posture, your focus, and your shift of weight distribution. And uh, hopefully you could really take your time with that while just, uh, you know, having that steady speed and not yeah. having a yeah. wave changing sections and closing out and, and uh, changing speed. So yeah, the way that you guys do it, I think is a category of its own overall, but it's also probably the easiest way to get into any foil sport just to get that feeling for, for flight. You know, you could be going eight to 15 miles an hour, slow speed with yeah. a high lift, easy beginner foil and be able to kind of like, you know, you'd be surprised the, the type of, I'm sure you guys have seen it too, you know? You don't need to be an extreme athlete, let alone a pro surfer yeah. to foil. Actually, I think it's quite the opposite. A lot of the pro surfers I've taught have a harder learning experience <laughs> than someone who has no board experience at all. And I think it's maybe because they're approaching it with a very clean slate. They're listening yeah. to the instruction from their coach um, and they're kind of just following the step-by-step -step instruction. Whereas a surfer or a windsurfer has this instinctual muscle memory just locked in. And a lot of the time it's counterintuitive from what we yeah. want to do on a foil. Yeah, the, um, what I found with the foiling is all the surfing, your controls coming from your back foot. Mm -hmm. Foiling, you have to control, you know, with your front foot, right? So exactly. it, like to me, it's like first time you get up on a foil, it's almost like doing a manual on a skateboard. You kind of elevate it and then you kind of move your weight forward. That's a right? really good analogy. So, so if, yeah. you're, if you're gonna give a, a tip to all the surfers out there who are gonna go prone foil for their first time, like what are the you know one to two tips that you would give them to, to think about as they, as they get on their first wave? Before you get onto your first wave, if you can, get behind a boat. Um, do it with someone who knows how to foil so they understand the appropriate speed and maybe even could give you a little bit of tips before. Um, but if you're just throwing yourself out there in the surf, I recommend um, hopefully having a board that you could paddle on easily because paddling into the wave and getting to your feet is the majority of the challenge in the beginning. You know, you have to be able to get paddle into the wave with comfort and jump smoothly center to your front foot. 
And that's probably the most counterintuitive thing from someone who already has surf experience. We want to jump to our back foot and roll rail to rail and control that board side to side, counterbalance per se side to side. It, with foiling, we get that sensation of control with the counterbalance back to forth as opposed to side to side. Yeah. And so like you mentioned on the manual, you know, just because we're engaging a little bit of weight back and weight distribution towards the tail to engage lift, we're almost immediately shifting forward again. And so that's probably the second tip is steps. Tip number one, up, forward and center. Tip number two, keep forward and uh, as you have that controlled shift back and engage lift immediately shift forward again because then you have that counterbalance right. back to forth and it's easier to fly than it is to land and so keep that in mind as you're getting going don't get excited trying to get up to full height take it very slow keep make a goal of keeping the board on the water if you could be holding the rope staying behind the boat standing erect upright you know i like to tell my students to pinch the penny it's a classic windsurf instructor maneuver mm. uh, a tip excuse me you know pinching the penny meaning bring your hips in like you're holding up a penny in between your butt cheeks <laughs> right and so this connects your core to your body and your upper body and uh, it's a very I think important tip that a lot of people forget, especially if you're a surfer or any board sport. We want to have our butt out, chest over, and that's only going to throw us off. We want to have all that weight over that foil and minim uh, minimizing all of our movements to that slight shift forward and back. And forward, yeah, a, good, a back. good thing to practice if you have, or your kids have a one wheel. A one, <laughs> one wheel, wheel feels yeah. like being on a foil. Because totally. You control that momentum going forward, right? Is kind of you're sustaining it, but it, yeah. it's the same posture I feel like on the one wheel as foiling. It's amazing you know? how many people just relate it to one it, to one wheeling, but it really is. It's hard to under. It's also one of those sports that's hard to wrap your ha head around, though, if you don't understand the one wheel. Right. It's kind of like hard to understand that sensation, but. It, it really is a great cross training yeah. for foiling. A good thing to do too, like I, there are a couple guys at the harbor today and they're sup guys, right? But they're on their sups and they're like, oh, we're just trying to figure out how to prone. Yeah. And they're like, like Tomoyasu from Japan. Did you see him out there? I, I, I don't <laughs> know if I, no, I don't know if he was there. It's just two guys, right? And they're yeah. talking to me. They're like, how do you catch these waves? You know, pro we're used to having the paddle. Yeah. And I, I just told them, you know, just, you know, keep your weight forward so you're not plowing the board, right? Yeah, like, exactly. so be up on there. But catch the white water and just go straight. Like, let that thing engage, let that sup engage, get your momentum going straight. Don't worry about left or right, just worry about getting to your feet and then elevate the foil. And then yep. you can kind of figure it out. But that's so, a really good. Good tip. And sure. so if you have if you have like a, a supper, somebody who's comfortable on stand-up paddle board, they've been in the ocean before, and they're gonna get on foil for the first time. Like what what are those one to two tips for a sup uh, a sup paddler who's now gonna become a sup foiler? There's a lot of work we could do even on flat water to practice for this, and I think it's kind of a re relief for a lot of my students to hear. You know, a lot the most common Thing that needs to be worked on is that smooth footwork and that transition from our sup stance feet side by side into our surf stance or our foil stance as we could call it as we're kind of more over the front foot and center and so what I like to, to, to uh, have my students practice before we even get into the lineup is that smooth transition paddling keeping our momentum while also keeping our tracking ability. Because usually the, the, one of the hardest things, and a lot of people who got into stand-up paddling probably remember this, controlling your turn into the wave as you're paddling. You know, of course, if you paddle on one side, you're gonna continuously turn a little bit. Yeah. And so you have to time that rotation into the wave. Now with the foil, it's kind of accelerated sensation, you know, with that that foil kind of uh, tr uh, uh, affecting your tracking ability. And so practicing paddling in a straight line, there's a few ways to do this. Keeping your paddle upright, 
keeping your paddle completely straight up and down with your top hand over the side you're paddling on, as opposed to oh, like this with your top hand um, over the opposite side you're paddling on. Right. It's a common mistake people do. Whereas if your paddle's like this, you want your top hand over the side you're paddling on with your head in this little window between your arms and the paddle. That's gonna be a really good tip to help you paddle in a straight line uh, to keep your tracking ability. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, then because from, that even becomes harder because with the foil, you don't have the fins on the back and so the board is mm -hmm. more apt to shift left and right. Yeah, so it's probably one of, the, one of the biggest things people struggle with is just getting that rotation right while keeping momentum into the wave. Now the next thing is that transition of our feet from our comfortable side-by-side -side stance as we're paddling into our surf stance. Now our body mo motion needs to stay square to the nose, right? What happens with most people when they step to their surf stance is all of a sudden your balance is lost because now when we're paddling, their motion is going side to side. We need to remember to reach forward in front of the front foot over the nose and then as we stroke we pull back over the back foot minimizing the butt and the chest getting over the water with each stroke and yeah. so that this is kind of more of um you know weight displacement keeping our center of gravity over the board our stroke if i could stand up and do a little demonstration i'm in my surf stance nose is out in front of me my paddle is upright to enhance my tracking ability. Now instead of paddling like this, which is making the board tip side to side, I'm gonna distribute my weight reaching forward, chest over the board, keeping that center of gravity over that front knee. And as I pull back, I'm standing straight up and throwing my board forward, right? And so keeping this movement over the center of the board here, right? And that's important instead of going side to side yeah. like this. The hula. Yes, you know? the hula hoop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's for your suppers as you get the foil. Zane, there's something I gotta ask you about. I was watching some of your videos. I saw you come down a wave on a standard sup and pull a 360. With the foil? <laughs> no, no foil. Just a standard <laughs> sup surf. Whole board, long board. Have you seen this, John? <laughs> no, the whole thing, know. it pulls the whole thing. It's going backwards. Then he oh, brings yeah. it all the way around. With the giant board. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. nose like, ride 360s. That's how do you fun. do that, man? That's insane. That's probably the first maneuver I fell in love with for the sport of stand-up paddling. You know, when I was like 12, 13 years old and I first got this big old <laughs> yeah. sup board, I was already shortboarding and windsurfing. I'm like, what the heck am I gonna do with this giant thing? Yeah. And I learned how to play with it right out in front of here. Right, you know, yeah. Lonnie Upoko just <laughs> on small days, practicing footwork, moving on the board, yeah, controlling yeah. that weight distribution and the pivot point in order to nose ride and release the fins to do 360s like, yeah. like you saw. Yeah. And, but yeah, there's so much, um, especially here on Maui, as you guys are starting to see it, every day it's just a whole new adventure uh, awaits, whether it's for wind sports, foil sports, surf sports. Yeah. And uh, that's been fun to hang with you guys. I'm <laughs> bummed I've been out of the water yeah. with my injury. Yeah. You guys see that thing. Okay, so let's get back to it. Wind surfers who want to become wind foilers. Yes. Are there any are there any tips? So, you know, let's say you've been windsurfing for a number of years. Finally you're gonna put a, a foil on the bottom of that board. Yep. And you're gonna go out for your first time. Is there like one or two things that they should think about? Well let, let's start with a really big tip that's universal between all the different sports and, and, and trust me from experience don't take a kite surf or a windsurf foil surf foiling <laughs> they're not built for it yeah. now you could take a surf foil windsurf foiling or kite surf foiling but don't take a windsurf foil or a kite surf foil surf foiling they're not they're not made for low speed high li uh, high lift mm -hmm. the design is different now we could take that surf foil that we use prone or sub foiling and put it on a windsurf board or a kite board and still have a lot of fun. It's a very different style of riding. Right. It's slower and more upright and more, you know, kind of fun. I believe that's a great way to get started windsurf foiling. Oh really? Is to put a, a surf or a sub foil on a, uh, a windsurf board. Now, now when you say put a surf or a sub foil, you're talking about the actual, like the foil design. Yes, but also the size as well, because 
The general size for, wind, uh, excuse me, sup and surf foiling. Sup more specific, is a little bigger than surf foiling. Yeah. But I'd say between 15 and 2200 is what most people are using. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? And on a windsurf or kite surf foil, I'd say the most common size is like 800. Right, right. You know, yeah. it's, it's or 1100. Yeah. You know, it's quite a bit smaller. And the, you know, you have a different load of weight when, with a sail in front of you. You yeah. have your mast, it's loaded up out in front. There's different torque and pressure on that foil. And so, um, Anyway, back to the tip for windsurf foiling. I I think windsurf foiling with a, with a surf foil, larger wing, larger wing, um, okay. more set for higher lift and slower speed is comfortable because a lot of these windsurf foils and kite surf foils that you may have a chance to ride, you know, your friends already ripping on a windsurf foil, you might jump on that one and think, yeah, you could do it. And your friend's gonna tell, you, yeah, go for it. It'll be fun, they said. You know, right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's meant for going a lot faster. It's meant to lean over into yeah. it, and not be straight up and down. Oh. Oh, and right, so, right, yeah, and right. so a lot of these windsurf foils are designed to not be upright. They're designed to be locked into the harness, leaning over. And the further you lean over, the better. Right. Yeah. For these, yeah. you know, yeah. that leverage yeah. Yeah. is applying the appropriate force on right, the foil, right, the mass, right. the wings. It, exa exactly right. So John and I have, have taught a couple uh, kite foilers behind yeah. the boat. And they want to lean into the yeah, rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one, no, of the things, on. one of the yeah, things totally. that we do is we manage the rope to try to keep people in the second wave. Yep. You can't do that with the kite foiler. They're just straight just, to the yeah, side. Yeah, they're falling. <laughs> you know? Fully, yeah, I totally understand. I feel you for sure. Okay, so if we come back to, to wing foiling, at least what I've seen is a lot of windsurfers, because they're used to sheeting in to go upwind, going forward to go downwind, have a pretty natural movement into wing foiling. Um, are the rain, you know, your, you know, a tip or two about wing foiling as people get started, or they move yeah, from, totally. you know, what, what would you say that would be? Well, if you haven't had wind sport experience, practice wing foiling on a big sup that you're comfortable mm, with, with no yeah, foil. Yeah, yeah. This is how I teach a lot of my first-time students. You know, get them out on a big old sup, yeah. a volume that I already know they could stand up paddle on. Or I already know they could easily get from their stomach to knees, knees to feet, and even if there's a little bit of chop, they have that comfort. Right. Because this, they gotta be able to, learning a wind sport takes patience. And it really does take a little bit of resilience as well, but you know, it's better to have a, a nice big platform for you to practice just learning the wind, how to hold the wing, right. and not be thinking about flying. And now yeah. the, the problem about this is usually we end up doing a lot of walking back right, upwind yeah, yeah. up the beach because you know without the foil yeah you just go straight downwind pretty much you could still apply a little bit of a you know force pulling back and as well a little bit of rail and back foot to kind of assist upwind but for the most part without the foil you're going to be blowing downwind okay so make sure this would be tip number one safe location make sure you have a nice stretch of a right. uh, downwind run, yeah. right? Wind onshore or side onshore, right? Nothing else really, because you don't want to get blown out to sea. You want to be right. able to get blown down into a safe area. If there's rocks downwind of you, don't don't go up wind more. So you have a nice clean stretch of beach, right? Safety tip number two, or just wing foil tip number two: get out there on your subboard. Practice having your back to the wind and getting from your knees, fishing the wing to you, getting with your fist planted, one hand on the wing, your down ha downwind hand on the wing, planting fist, getting up to your feet, and then bringing front hand to control above your head. Mm. And that's the first step, right? Once you're on your feet, is front hand mm -hmm. is controlled on the leading edge of the, uh, edge of the, w the wing, yeah. or the handle that's furthest upwind. Right, and then from here, you're new. This is like neutral, and you could just balance light pressure on one of the ha handles behind, trying to keep the wing up above your head. Because one of the biggest and most tedious errors for someone learning is when the wing drops like this, and then yeah, all of a sudden, dragging that all of a sudden, yeah, the tip starts dragging, and then it folds, <laughs> and then that you joke? fall yeah. over <laughs> into the wing. And so, yeah. anytime you feel that happening, let go of your back hand, front hand straight up over the head. And that's neutral again. That's your that's great tip. your first. Anytime you feel like you're losing your balance or the wings overpowering you, 
windsurfing, any wind sport is a, is a test of when to fight and when to surrender. You're never going to win the win yeah, over yeah. the wind. Yeah. You know, anytime you feel it overpowering you, you yeah. have to rely on your neutral. Let go of your backhand, which is controlling power, and lift your front hand straight up over the head. And that's neutral again. Yeah. As soon as you put your apply your backhand on one of the handles, that's like first gear. As soon as you start pulling a little bit, that's like second gear. Yeah. As soon as you start dropping a little more forward, that's like third gear. But, you know, just like on a dirt bike when you're learning, you don't want your kid to jump on whiskey throttle. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Start slow, right? Yeah, yeah. Start one hand above the head, light pressure, keeping yeah, the wing yeah. flat above your head. Yeah, I, I, that's a great tip. And, and so I, I think really the only one we haven't talked about yet is kite foiling. And so before uh, a kiter who has is competent twin tip, and most likely, I think, <laughs> if you're gonna go to get into kite foiling, you're probably good with a directional, yeah. at least reasonably competent. What should the kiter do on their first day when they go out on a kite foil? I'm laughing a little bit because I'm not probably not the, the most expert kite foiler, yeah. but I have had a lot of fun with a kite foil and I've definitely had my scariest foil wipeouts kite foiling. Okay. You know? Really? For sure. Oh yeah. The most crazy wet foil experiences I've ever had is kite foiling. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's so a good time where I like drew I like stepped away from the kite foil for a bit. But yeah. I'd say one of the big uh lessons like I could share from experience. Yeah. Right, is you don't need to be very powered up. You know, tr have have a wing, a kite that you could still move around a little bit but you don't need to be loaded up with power because right. as soon as you get that foil up off the water and you start moving and accelerating, your power and your speed and your range of motion just Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and then all of a sudden you're edging into the wind, leaning into it. And so um, I would say don't go straight into leaning over, you know, as you would on a twin tip, you know, try and keep a small wing broad reach and kind of more kite straight up above you more neutral not loaded up and powered leaning yeah, over yeah right. right okay um that's you know that's a good tip and for, for me you know i went out on a pretty maui it's mount maui right. wind yeah. every yeah. day yeah. on maui i feel like you're pretty overpowered when you're kite surfing yeah. or wind surfing right you got a strong yeah. wind and so my kite surf quiver is designed for west maui usually a little lighter winds and so on my West Maui quiver is bigger kites. And I pretty much only kite on West Maui because right. it's uncrowded and it's a little more friend, user friendly for me. But anyway, I went over to join my friend Nicolo Porcella mm -hmm. and Brett Lickle at Kite Beach. And Brett Lickle is yeah. like, to me, one of my biggest uh, influences for foiling in general. Okay. But he also is the first person to teach me to kite foil. And so he invited me to come on kite foil with him at uh, Lower Kanaha. I brought my, my west side foil quiver. My smallest one's a nine. And it was like a pretty windy day, you know, nine. Is, yeah, you know, and pretty Uncle lit. Brett was like, uh, yeah, give it a go, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brett, Brett and Niccolo, they're pretty low key guys, you know, they're, they're not doing any crazy stuff. Which is not true, right? Like I've seen these guys. I was gonna say, no, like, yeah, yeah, no. I'm like, you know, if you got these guys taking you out, saying you're gonna be in for something. So, yeah. so it's funny because like my first run out, I remember being so lit on this nine meter, and Uncle Brett is like riding out in front of me, like, yeah, right on. Nicklo's doing like flips, kite loops over my head, and then all of a sudden, I just I try and do a set attack, like the most depowered slow mellow tack you could ever do and i'm just totally lit i go for this tack i switch my feet real quick and i just a little too much on the back foot and yeah. the foil does a flip a back flip but oh, without me no. attached to it oh my god and gosh. as it flips it hooks the right line oh my god and gosh. just goes straight into kite loop kite loop kite loop kite loop down it oh and i'm getting well i'm like 30 <laughs> like 15 to 30 feet in the air my foil is spinning above my head like an ostracizer i'm pulling every eject i could possibly pull like ah! 
<laughs> the foil's like literally spinning in the lines above my head. It was fun. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh. I can't believe I didn't get hurt. Yeah. So Thank that's you. a good tip. Yeah. Make, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. make sure the conditions are right and go out with a smaller, smaller yeah. kite. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So I, I think if we look Take at- Take tips from an expert too, because I'm not an expert yeah, kite right. foiler. I'm, Just you know. learn from his experience. <laughs> and so anyways, I, I think if we look across all the foil disciplines, if you have the opportunity, the, the main tip is, is get behind a boat, get behind a jet ski, learn how to learn how to fly that foil. Yeah. And then whichever discipline really turns you on, that, that, is, that makes sense to you, go for it. And the good news is, is that one discipline is gonna feed another, is gonna totally. feed another. And what I've found from just, you know, wing foiling out, it, it caught on the waves and everything and, and holding the wing behind and just going down that wave, having to deal with the undulating water and how it happens mm -hmm. makes me much more stable when I'm wake foiling. Totally. And when, you know, all those things kind of feed in when I get up to prone foil surf, that, that I'm helped by being able to wing for them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and all of them are so much fun. And, you know, and when you travel someplace like Maui, very rarely is it going to be where you don't have wind. But if you know how to prone foil, mm -hmm. surf, you, you're, you're skunk proof because you get out like there and the paddle truth. and have a great time, yeah. right? Because Maui has so much to do. Zane, uh, so thankful that you'd spend time with, with yeah. John and I. I mean, seriously, man, amazing. The, in terms of Masters of the Ocean, I think all of us, all of us guys, <laughs> we, we wish we could do what you do. It's, it's so fun. You guys fun can, so. man. You guys Masters of the Ocean too in your own class, bro. That's right, in our own class. Life masters, Yeah, bro. within our own little zone. Yeah, yeah, we could create some littleness. But thank you very much, oh, Johnny. Yeah. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, well, I'd like to add that, that I think with the foiling, it just expands your your horizon right like so like behind the boat on a foil you don't have a little zone to ride you now have second wave third wave fourth wave you can pump across yeah, that's behind yeah. the boat when you're down uh surfing right you can outrun these crumbly whitewater sections and you can foil spots nobody would ever surf because the waves are just kind of sloppy but once you're on foil it becomes awesome right yeah oh yeah and then it's the same thing for the kite and the wing so if you get that baseline on the foil, you just open up so many possibilities. So such a great point. Really I, I mean, you know, when you compare like longboard surfing it to foiling, it's like the speed that you can get on that foil, and you're exactly right. The movement you can make on that wave right. is oh, so yeah. broad. And I think that's also a really good point too for a lot of the people listening, because I think a lot of the time people are a little confused on where to start. Like they want a foil, but like. Should I wing foil? Should I prone foil? You know, should I sub foil? And one of the biggest things I like to look at is what's the environment around you like? Right. You know, like, because I have a friend uh, in South Africa, Dylan Witchman, his neighborhood is, is like in this little uh, landlocked community with all these waterways in between. And he, he literally pumps to his friend's house. He, yeah, goes, yeah, to his, yeah, yeah, he yeah. goes to his backyard <laughs> no kidding. and he'll he'll just jump off his dock and doot, 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 right down there. quarter mile down to his buddy's house, transfer to his dock completely dry. And so if that's your environment around you, hell, you might be a damn good pump foiler in your future. Yeah. You know, yeah. if, if you're yeah. out in New York and you got this onshore wind and occasionally some really nice waves coming into rock or you know, who knows where the wave is. You could go out and wing foil and probably even surf foil on most days too. Right. Yeah, I, well, and the other thing too is you don't, you know, with, with a foil, you don't need a $150,000, $160,000 wakeboard boat to do it. Yeah. The reality is like, you can, all you need is to be able to go about like nine miles an hour, 12 miles yeah. an hour. You can do that behind a dinghy. You can, I've done it before, right? Yeah. So like if you want to get into it, you 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 know, if you can get access to yeah. a boat, it doesn't have to be a, an expensive boat, it just has to pull you enough to Dude, be able to we've, do it. We've done we've done some pretty funny clinics foiling. I mean like we get some pretty psyched up kids at events, like when we go travel and yeah. I remember one time we were in uh, Tahiti and there's all these kids on the dock, they're freaking out on the foil. It was the first time 
you know, we uh, Matahi Jole and Tika Nui Smith and Lorenzo and all the pro surfers from Tahiti had a chance to see this in, in action. And I remember we taught them how to foil that day behind the boat and they were freaking out. Just right, like so right, yeah. We came into the kit and, the, and all the young local kids are freaking out. Next thing you know, we're literally running with a rope along the dock yeah. Yeah. and just the kids are waiting for us to start pulling on a big floater board already standing. Yeah, yeah. And we start running and they get a few moments of flight and we're just having a blast, <laughs> literally yeah, just pulling yeah. each other. We've done that also along the beach with an extra long rope and an electric bicycle. You know, literally just like pulling each other with the beach bike or beach ATV right, right yeah, along the water, yeah, the river's yeah. edge. You know, I've got away with teaching on a nine horsepower dinghy in um, in Hood River, which is like ridiculous. You right. tell that to a wakeboarder and they're like, yeah, right, well, you're yeah, not gonna yeah. get me up. You know, on a foil, believe it or not, all you really need is like eight to 10 miles an hour with the right foil. And so, yeah, like you said, you could get away with uh, not too much pull on a, on a little junk boat or jet ski and take turns having so much fun but still even wake surf and that's the crazy part is like you could actually almost let go of the wake and foil ride the wake behind a jet ski right yeah you yeah, know? yeah. And it's like yeah. the like it's the tiniest little wake you could ever imagine mm -hmm. and you still can play around letting go of the rope and getting that feeling so get out there get on a foil have fun Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're here on Maui, we're gonna connect you with Zane so you can get out there and do any type of water sports that you want. Thank you so much. Aloha, mahalo. Thank you, Zane. Thank you, John. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys <laughs> later. Ahoy ho. Make sure you get my good side. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is.